I want to see what is this on the port 2022 thing. Blah, blah, blah. Being up a production ready VPS, I received a few questions in the comments about something I mentioned regarding SSH. In that video, I explained that I don't change the port that SSH listens on from the standard port of 22, as doing so is considered security through obscurity. This ended up being one of the most debated topics in that video's comments, with a number of viewers asking why I felt that way and suggested that changing SSH from the standard port was still better than not, as doing so would improve the overall security <laughs> for 2069. So this is this is where I've actually discussed this a little bit in past streams, where security through obscurity isn't the best form of security, because the security through obscurity is based on that people haven't recognized where your vulnerability is, and it's a one-time security, which means once it's discovered, you're no longer secure through this. So, the honest truth is, I don't even use, uh, uh, I don't even change my ports a lot. What I do is I reinforce the defenses around it. So, this is why I tell people, you shouldn't be relying on security through obscurity a lot of the time. You should be reinforcing the gate they're knocking on. Now, you can do this with different things like port knocking. Um, you should be assigning it to an SSH key, not base credentials. Um, you should um, have fail to ban set up. So fail to ban, you can actually set up to limit the amount of attempts through the IP. So, like, you can, like, say, limit, like, a few attempts per, like, 30 seconds or whatever band, uh, amount of time you want to allot it to. Um, so, there's a lot of more things you should be focusing on than security through obscurity. And not to mention, at scale, this is annoying to manage. So, like, while it's like, oh, I got my own, like, three, four, five servers, it's great. Now imagine you got to do this for a corporation and you got to do it unmasked. Now you got to document the ports are differently for your developers to hit. So imagine you're in a corporation that has dozens, hundreds, thousands of servers in AWS, Azure, Linode, Hetzner, you name it. Now they got to remember all the ports for all of them. It's not really going to help overall except for that first initial discovery and it's going to cause management problems more than anything. So with that being said, let's continue. But is that actually the case? Well, in order to find out, I thought it would be a good idea to do a dedicated video on the subject. Not only giving my opinion as to why I don't personally change SSH from port 20. I'd be interested to see what he says. It doesn't improve security, some of the positives and negatives doing so can bring, and what I think are some better approaches instead. Before we jump in, I want to quickly take a minute to talk about the sponsor of t Okay, so before he gets into it, I'm betting he's going to mention failed to ban. He may mention CrowdSec, the cool alpaca. I like these guys. They're good. It's like failed ban on steroids. Crowdsourcing your blocking. Open source, not affiliated, just cool stuff. Um, might be mentioning port knocking. Um, of course, there's the zero trust network access slash VPN approach, although VPN should be phased out in favor of zero trust network access. And of course, SSH keys. That's that's my opinion. We'll see what he says. Video. Skip the sponsor. Or clicking Brilliant's annual premium. To understand why I don't change SSH off the default port of 22, let's first define my original comment of security through. Did Linus get his Twitter compromised again? Defined as the practice of concealing the details or mechanisms of a system in order to enhance its security. In more simple terms, this is similar to the concept of hiding in place. Did anyone else hear that? Because that's what Chris is saying. Than hiding a password inside of a locked drawer, instead hiding it inside of the pages of a book. The idea is that by doing so, any would-be attackers would be focused on attempting to gain access to the locked drawer. I don't know if it's the same guy. ...checking each page in a seemingly innocuous book. When applied to SSH, this is the same idea as setting the services port to something other than the standard of 22. And by doing so, it... Not to mention, um, when doing all these things across different ports, you do an SSD scan, um, an SS scan, you got 65,500 and... Is it 35? You don't have a lot of, you know, um... 
you don't have a lot of choices to go from in the grand scheme of things. ...or obscures the fact that SSH is running on the box. This, in theory, should prevent a number of automated bots from attempting to gain access through the SSH service, therefore increasing the overall security of the system. In addition to reducing authentication attempts, proponents... This stream is brought to you by Delete Me. ...that by doing so, it <laughs> also brings some further benefits, such as reducing both IO oh, you utilization joke. and storage on the machine, through a reduced number of writes to the system's... You mentioned it which is a log file that contains all of the authentication attempts on the system, including SSH. On the surface of it, changing SSH away from the standard port sounds like a good idea. Okay. Yeah, it but does, but... Reality, it doesn't actually... And to be honest, I used to do this. I used to hide my ports until I saw the futility of it. ...prove security at all and in some cases can actually hinder it. To explain why security through obscurity doesn't work, here I have a VPS instance with SSH running on a non-standard port. If I try to use SSH on this machine, pointing it to port 22... Yeah, I got IP whitelisting, but if you're in dynamic, it can be a pain. Now, let's pretend I'm an attacker, and I want to break into this VPS instance via brute force. How difficult is it for me to find which port SSH is running on? Well, not that hard. It out, it's not that difficult at all. If I use the following nmap command to port scan my VPS, which as a disclaimer... I accidentally said Nessus when I meant nmap. They both start with N, okay? There's a lot of confusing tools. I would but you could do the same thing with Nessus too. That you own. I can detect the SSH port in a trivial amount of time. Which means I'm able to easily... No, I don't have delete me auto pop up it at the yet. SSH service. This is where security through obscurity starts to fall apart. Because despite what the French Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte... I'm not familiar with Linux FX. ...doesn't last forever. And it's only really a matter of time before a remapped port is discovered, and we're back to relying on whatever security we have in place in order to protect our machine. So basically what I was saying is, it doesn't really help you with security through obscurity. Which we'll take a look at later on in the video. Now, to be fair, most advocates for changing SSH's port are aware that it doesn't improve security. Instead, focusing on security through obscurity as a probability reducer, lowering the odds of your machine being... Port knock? It's a thing. But port knocking has the issue of documentation and scalability. ...than just changing the port to something non-standard. This is because the port that you do change it to matters quite a lot. Fail to ban definitely is a big thing. Another service called Shodan. If you're unaware, Shodan is a search engine designed to map and gather information about internet connected devices and systems. I gotta play with Shodan again, it's been a minute. ...by performing scanning on IP addresses across the internet in order to collect data on which Thank services you. and ports are available on each address. In our case, we can use Shodan to search for any detected IP addresses that have SSH running on port 22 by using the following query. When I execute this query, we can see it returns just over 18 million results, which is a I have a problem. My OpenVPN is blocked up by my firewall on my laptop. Running on I can port, put a VPN on my iPhone. That's kind of weird. ...instances of SSH running on a non-standard port. This is achieved... I don't know why it would work on one, but not the other. ...22, using the following syntax. If I go ahead and run I like this, to set up Honey D on multiple ports on Honey Drive. Results. Around 10 million less than the... My VPN on my laptop, it works with this soft either VPN. ...doesn't really hmm. tell us very much. However, there You'd is have to look at your logs. ...why changing the port may not reduce the probability of an attack. If we take a look at the results by ports, we can see there's actually a large number of hosts that share common port values, with hmm. the most common one being port 2222. Like I said, you got, what, 65,535 choices, if I'm not mistaken? It's not a lot of variation. So, yeah. With just over 600,000 hosts. No, it's just the Trader Joe's um, veggie pizza with some olives and stuff on, added to it. Really random. Instead, these are ports that are easy to remember and therefore are most likely. Yeah, those are all very common things. And that's where a lot of people are going to end up. Um, messing up because like i said how do you support this at scale one would choose when moving away from the standard port unfortunately however a significant number of people have the same idea 
which means that these ports have a higher likelihood of being included in any opportunistic attacks. In order to prove that this is the case, I changed the SSH port on my VPS to 2222 and restarted the box. Initially, this did prevent the VPS from receiving any automated login attempts. However, this only lasted for about 20 minutes. Yep. After which, the attacks resumed and my auth.log was again logging these authentication attempts. However, yep. when I changed my port to something less commonly used, I still hadn't received any authentication attempts after 24 hours. Well, there... Therefore, not every port change is equal. So in order to have the greatest reduction... Well, that's because most attacks you're going to receive on your network, they're automated. Oh, thank you. They're automated, so they're going to have a bot that's just pinging a lot of different stuff. And they're going after the things that happen to affect most people very often. So, but it's not going to help if you have an actual targeted attack. If you have a human behind that, they're going to do a little bit more than a scripted attack. Script kiddies and, you know, run things like that probability of being attacked, the port that SSH is remapped to is ideally one that is further down on this list, which means it needs to both be an uncommon port and somewhat random. But this comes with its own issues. The first of which is that if you're choosing a truly obscure port, it's likely going to be a port that's not easily remembered, which means... Like I said, how are you going to manage the set scale? means you'll probably want to write it down. The best place to do this is most likely your SSH config, which does have the benefit of making it easier to SSH into your hosts. Whilst this works for a solo developer on a single machine, it starts to become an issue when you have multiple machines or work as part See? of the team as you then need Scalability! to to share this configuration. Not only this, but if you happen to have multiple hosts running SSH, then having them share an obscure port can be a security issue by itself. Mm -hmm. This is because in the event of a targeted attack, if attackers detect that SSH is running on an obscure port, they may then scan the internet for other instances of SSH running on the same port in order to detect which other IPs may belong to the same entity. And See? Tools such as ZMAP, this can be achieved in under five minutes. So in that case, in order to be Security through obscurity only is a first layer, but it's not really a layer one should depend on. You should focus on everything else. Truly obscure, each host would need to have a different port in order to reduce the effectiveness of a targeted attack. But by doing so, you're increasing your system's complexity. Not only this, but there's another security risk when it comes to changing SSH away from the standard port. This is because, most likely, the port that SSH is changed to is a non-privileged port. Privileged ports are those with a number less than 1024. These yep. ports require root access in order to listen on, which acts as a security feature, as you yep. can be somewhat confident that any services running on these ports are the real thing. By running SSH on a non-privileged port, this can become a security risk on any compromised machine, as it means mm -hmm. attackers are able to spin up a fake SSH service to collect passwords and other authentication information. Not only this, but binding SSH to a non-standard port can cause other issues when working as part of a larger team. Typically, both... Like I said, scalability becomes a bitch. Security teams and security software will expect SSH to be running on the standard port. And whenever SSH traffic is detected to be running on a non-standard... Yeah, two digital exploits point. Never allow root logins. SSH key it. Once they log in, elevate. Only allow privilege um, elevation for certain users that actually need it. Reduce the permissions to certain other users inside of it. That's how I work at work. I log in, and that's a su root or a pseudo dash i, depending on my mood. Port. This tends to raise an alarm and kick off an investigation. This is because a common approach to setting up a backdoor on a compromised system is to set up an SSH server listening on a non-standard port. In fact, this is so prevalent that tools such as Elasticsearch, which are often used in security analysis, come with built-in rules for detecting when SSH is running on a non-standard port. Yeah, that is a thing. So a lot of your security softwares like CrowdStrike, things like that, are going to check to make sure SSH is running on, you know, standard ports. Otherwise, then you have to configure them to different ways. 
you know, um, a lot of your security softwares are depending on the port being standard. Therefore, by doing so intentionally, it can make it more challenging to set up processes to detect actual intrusions, as you're incorporating non-standard behavior into your system. Of course, if you're a solo developer, then you don't have a security team to contend with. However, you'll most likely still have to integrate with tooling that expects SSH to be running on the standard port. This includes tools that you'd find on your CLI, such as SCP, or even tools that are found in CICD, such as Infrastructure as Code, all of which would need to be configured in order to work with the port changes. All of this is why I don't change SSH away from the standard port, as by doing so, it adds a number of different drawbacks whilst providing little to no benefit. Instead, I prefer to focus on other security measures, rather than adding unnecessary complexity into my system. So what are some of these other security measures that we can use instead? Well, as I mentioned in my previous video, both removing root access and forcing yep. key-based auth by disabling yep. password authentication are two great places to start. But what if we... Also use SSO with Octo or Duo, for example. So that's assuming you have identity and access management set up which I do recommend, but a lot of developers that are doing it solo don't have the ability to or don't want to expense it because there is an out-of-pocket expense. Um, but yeah, totally worth it. Identity and access management. To reduce the number of automated attacks in order to prevent the auth.log from being spammed. Well, as I mentioned before, there are some other approaches that we can take. The first of these is to enable allow listing for your own personal IP. Yep. This is great if you happen to have a static IP at your home, as well as the ability to remotely access your home network if you're ever away, such as OpenVPN or WireGuard. Been a minute since I heard of Hamachi. Static IP at home. Most people don't have a static IP. I'd love a static IP, but I don't have a static IP. Therefore, I can't allow list like I want to. If your IP is ever likely to change, which does happen with most residential ISPs, then this You're is going to be a bad idea. Additionally, this approach isn't going to work if you foresee needing to use SSH on IPs that you won't know in advance, such as setting up an SSH server on your own home network to use for when you're away. Therefore, another approach is to use an open source tool called Fail to Ban, which yep. is actually brought up Called in the it. video's comments. Fail to ban is a daemon process that actively monitors your system's auth.log. And when it detects that an IP has performed too many failed authentication attempts, it Fail to ban is like a required thing on anything I deploy. Of time. This, in my opinion, is a much better approach to securing SSH, rather than changing the standard port, and will also provide the benefit of reducing writes from opportunistic SSH brute forces, of which there are a lot. As mm -hmm. with both of these, there are a number of other options you can modify to harden SSH further. If you're interested, then I'll do a whole video looking at how to harden SSH in more detail. However, if you want to know more now, there's a great blog post by DigitalOcean. Yep, that's actually that same post right here that he's referencing. Now, I was looking at the Ubuntu 1804 version back in the day. That's how I learned a lot of this. DigitalOcean is some of the best documentation out there to get a lot of your basics for Linux system administration. I cannot recommend them enough. And you don't have to use a DigitalOcean box to do a lot of this because DigitalOcean has a stock Ubuntu image out of the box. So you could apply a lot of the same documentation running out of your own lab or anywhere else. So definitely recommend DigitalOcean's documentation. Values you can modify in the SSHD config. Granted, that's for 2004. We're now on 2404, so you're probably going to want to look at newer versions. There might be slight deviations, but most of this documentation should still apply because SSH hasn't changed too much. ...on your own system requirements. You can find a link to this and all of the other sources in this video in the description down below. Otherwise, a big thank you for watching, and a big thank you to my newest channel members, Brian M. and Anthony Bullard. The other thing that I use... Channel while you're looking at your VPS and stuff like that. Um, I'm gonna pull this up. There's another software out there called CrowdSec. These cool guys. Eh? The cool alpaca. Um, I met them at DEF CON last year. Really great bunch. So yes, they do have a enterprise version you can buy, but they also have a community-supported version. Doesn't cost you anything. Um, 
basically what it is they have several different things the crowd sec block list basically it's like failed to ban on steroids as well and it collects a lot of these abuse um uh these ips that are abusing things and preemptively block